All right, as promised, we are going to be speaking to political parties at this hour. And to start with the economic freedom fighters who are not happy with how a virtual meeting convened by President Cyril Ramaphosa and the Eskom board went. The party says it doesn't look like there are guarantees that the problem of rolling blackouts will be a thing of the past soon. Yet today, we are seeing reports suggesting that Finance Minister Eno Kodongwana says in the next 12 to 18 months, South Africa will be able to say rolling blackouts are a thing of the past. He reportedly said this on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum. We've heard all of this before, that rolling blackouts will be a thing of the past. So what's different this time round? Let's speak now to EFF Deputy President Flo Chambu, who joins us in studio. Flo, thank you so much for your time. Thank I'll you start with us. the meeting because I saw a statement by oh, the yes, EFF, yes, very yes. unhappy. Um, and, and, and I'll start at the part where it, it seems like the president was suggesting or the meeting was suggesting that there be collective responsibility for the issue of rolling blackout. Just tell us what happened there. No, look, just the background is that uh, Mr. Ramaphosa uh, and ESCOM board called all the political party leaders in parliament and uh, to then give a briefing about uh, the current load shedding, which started in 2021 and is still continuing, and it's even worse now, uh, in 2023. Uh, and then he opened the meeting by saying that we should take collective responsibility, which is absolute rubbish, because we're not responsible for the distribution of electricity. We're not responsible for the generation and transmission of electricity in South Africa. We oversee what government does and we oversee what the state does at ESCOM level. And we say it repeatedly to him and to the entire ESCOM board and to everyone who cared to listen that do not appoint incompetent people to lead ESCOM. And they went ahead and, and appointed the, uh, the Rita who never had any engineering experience or any electricity generation experience. We repeatedly say that you must move away from this illusion that you can just unplug coal-fired power stations because there is no immediate alternative that is available currently in South Africa. We, of course, care about the environment, but we have been saying all these things throughout, but there is no one who seems to be listening because Sarah Ramaphosa is trying to please the West and uh, taking huge loans from the West and entering into agreements which are not sustainable for South Africa. So, so this, is their, this is their own problem. We must not include us in terms of the problems that South Africa is, is, is confronted with currently. So very briefly, yes. were you explained to as to why there must be collective responsibility? Look, there was never an explanation on why we should take collective responsibility, all of us, for the crisis that we're in now. But what then happened after that uh, false statement, uh, a very objectionable and problematic statement by Mr. Sarah Ramaphosa, what then happened was that there were presentations by a board member of ESCOM, Teto Nyati, and then there was a presentation by the ESCOM CEO, and then there was a presentation by something called the National Energy Crisis Committee. And they spoke something that did not seem to be very coherent. And all of them said that there is no capacity to could resolve the energy crisis in the foreseeable future. They were actually saying that they suspect or think that at least in 24 months' time, we'll have utilized, we'll be utilizing 60% of the installed megawatts in South Africa. We've got about 54,000 megawatts that are installed as electricity. They say that they suspect that those that will be fully active in 24 months' time will be 60% of the energy that is available for usage in South Africa. And that is why we say that these people do not have a solid solution on what is to be done in the immediate. They are just trying to prepare society that we're going to live in darkness for a very long time. So Floyd, I'm listening to what you're saying. Yes. And then there's reports suggesting that the finance minister says that in possibly 12 to 18 months, uh, rolling blackouts may be a thing of the past. You are saying that the meeting didn't seem to point to a solution. It, look, it doesn't so look like you, these are if, speaking to one another. If you, have, if you could have observed the pattern of these uh, ANC politicians and charlatans, is that every time there is load shedding, they come and say it is going to be things of the past. You remember at some stage, Mr. Sela Ramaphosa cancelled an international trip to Ethiopia, and then he came back... Uh, waxing religal that 
uh, load shedding is a thing of the past. You went to the World Economic Forum several times that, and said on several occasions that load shedding is things of the past. So what Ino Godongwan is doing there is mimicking his master Ramaphosa. That, that is what they always do when they try to shine in front of their handlers at the World Economic Forum to assure them that there is no crisis of energy in South Africa. There is a crisis of electricity in South Africa, and that is due to lack of coherent policy direction and decisiveness of what, just what we what want to do with the many available resources of electricity that we are not utilizing maximally. Because you will know that electricity is primarily generated from coal, from nuclear, from water, from the sun, from wind. And we've got abundance of all those aspects that contribute to energy distribution and generation in South Africa. But we're not utilizing them maximally because we go around making uh, sometimes even foolish commitments in these uh, conference of parties meetings in, in, in Geneva and COP26 and now in Egypt in COP27 where we said we're going to discontinue coal whilst we know that there is no immediately available base load that is going to electrify the entirety of South Africa. And once you cut off electricity, you're going to destroy the whole country in terms of the economy. You're undermining healthcare, you're undermining the livelihoods of our people. And that is one of the things that we must have to deal with, uh, that they uh, were confronted with. And, but at the center of all of these things, is an incompetent leadership and government. An incompetent president, when, when the third phase of these power cuts happened in 2014. He was a deputy president. He was sent to preside over the ESCOM war room. And what did he do? Absolutely nothing. Currently, there's even a deeper crisis. He doesn't know. He cannot explain the technical challenges which they're saying are confronting ESCOM now because he's incompetent. He has hired and assembled incompetent people around him who cannot provide a solid and sound solution as to what is to be done to restore energy dependability in South Africa. I suppose listening to you then now, you, you are not convinced that his decision to stay in the country and hopefully try and sort out this particular crisis will yield a different result to what we've seen in the past, the cutting short of trips coming back, but we still then have load shedding. You're not confident that we could see a different picture now? There is absolutely nothing that is going to change uh, in terms of uh, uh, Mr. Ramaphosa. It's the third time, by the way, he is cancelling international trips in the pretext uh, that he is going to uh, solve the energy crisis. But now, even if you were to be cornered one by one to one and ask him just what is the cause of load shedding, he does not know. And he, he is also had, had been blinded by this loyalty to the Western forces that have promised him 8.5 billion US dollars to, to discontinue coal generation of electricity. And, and, and altogether confused as to what do we need to do. Because let us stop this illusion in South Africa that we can just transit to, towards renewable energy without having dealt with the, 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 the base load of coal. We have to purposefully pursue the clean coal technologies. We have to purposefully pursue nuclear as a source of energy. And even working with some of the countries that have got capacity to generate electricity from nuclear, and such as the Russian Federation, which currently provides more than 20% of their electricity from nuclear yeah. power. And we should look into that in a way that is fiscally neutral, so that we do not fall into the trap that we were misled in the, in the past that is going to cost trillions of rent, which, which is not true. So, Floyd, you know, a lot of South Africans often look to those that are in power, be albeit, you know, you fall from this, you are with this political party or that one, they sometimes do not even care. They look at those in Parliament and they say, what are you doing to get us out of this mess? Because we, I mean, I'm sure you saw even the front page of the Sowetan yesterday, some of the businesses that are crumbling under the pressure of the rolling blackouts. Let's talk about Parliament. Eskam has been there several times. There's been issues around sabotage, which they bring to the fore. They bring to the fore issues of the Eskom debt and all of that. I wonder how much of the responsibility of what we are seeing now should we also be putting to Parliament, where they've also appeared, where we have not seen needles move to, to this point. Look, look, uh, Bungi, we have on several occasions come with far much more superior alternatives and 
better policy approaches on South Africa's energy situation. But the sitting incompetent directionless government does not want to listen to that. For instance, I would think that now maybe to lessen the pressure on the grid, let us consider if we cannot unplug the aluminum smelters that are consuming more than 800 megawatts of electricity in South Africa and paying possibly with some of the cheapest rates for electricity. They are owned by companies that are linked to the sitting president, South 32, uh, the people who have funded the CR17 campaign and all of those things. Why should we still insist on them? Because they are not adding as much jobs. There's no economic value that they're adding. And we are still plucking them into the grid with the majority of our people are not having electricity. But also there is far much more advanced technological options which the Department of Energy had considered in their current emergency power purchasing processes, which included the floating storage regasification units. Like, so you've got floating power stations that come as ships to come and provide electricity. The, the, the Turkish people, the Russian, the Chinese have got that solution. But there is always problematization of those solutions because people are not given bribes to benefit out of that particular project. And there are so many solutions that are immediately available to could deal with the energy and load shedding crisis. But they, those that have got the power to implement, they close their ears, they do not want to listen to anything. They only listen to the Western forces to the extent that it becomes Joe Biden who announces that South Africa is going to irrationally close the coal power stations before there's even thorough consultations domestically. I wonder if you might be able to share some of the information that you are alleging here with us about some of those companies yes. being linked. Then definitely we'll, we'll continue to follow up on that. Floyd, we, we saw the, the EFF marching in the rain. Um, at some point to Megawatt Park. And uh, we then saw even um, Eskom CEO and the Reiter coming there in the rain and receiving a memorandum from yourselves. Today, the Democratic Alliance even saying that for them, this is even enough to warrant court action. They're not happy with quite a lot that is happening right now. I wonder, what are you going to be doing as a political party to ensure that there's accountability with what we're seeing right now? Look, part of the things which uh, we said, which the Commander-in-Chief, by the way, in the meeting which Mr. Ramaphosa called with ESCOM board, first he said to the Reiter that we accept that you have resigned as ESCOM CEO, but you must leave immediately. And second, he said that the next person who must step down is the incompetent president of this country. Sir Ramaphosa is the disaster that is defining this South Africa. And the sooner everyone else accepts that, the better. Everything else under him is collapsing. The levels of unemployment, the poverty levels, the infrastructure is collapsing, the levels of crime, the murder rates are high. Electricity is not dependable. And it's not like he doesn't have the power to could solve that. He must take political responsibility. Someone must have to fall on his sword in terms of the crisis that we're faced with here. People must stop being fooled by the white, capitalist establishment and media that are force feeding us an incompetent clown who is unable to provide energy stability when people are dying in hospitals, when people are, are, are losing their jobs everywhere. The person that must take full responsibility, he has been for eight years now, been given direct functions to bring energy stability. He was the chairperson of the war room. He's a sitting president. He puts Pravin God down there. He gives, them all, he gives him all the power isolates the Department of Energy. There is no clarity as to what should happen. Right. He is the one who approved the appointment of an incompetent uh, a person to become the CEO of ESCOM. And now when there's a crisis, he says all of us must be blamed. He must take full responsibility. And that is what we're going to demand must happen in the... We have marched, we have done everything. We have brought all the weaknesses that define South Africa in terms of the in incompetent head of state who must step down so that we can come with a collective solution as All to what right. to happen moving forward. Because, by the way, there are so many people in South Africa, black executives, who have in the past stabilized ESCOM. They must be consulted as to what is to be done uh, moving forward because this solution can be resolved far much sooner than we have uh, right. the crisis uh, as is pertaining now. All right, Floyd, thank you so much for that. And as we end off there, uh, we have Paul Mabe from the ANC coming up after this, and hopefully he'll respond to some of what you've had to say. That's the Economic Freedom Fighters Deputy President, Floyd Shivambo.